Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting up a Primaris Space Marine in Imperial Fist colors in comic style. Now because I'm doing this as a comic style approach, it's going to be a little bit brighter than your typical Imperial Fist Marine might be. I'm going to be using Zamisi Desert, Uriel Yellow, and Flash Gets Yellow as the base for my yellow painting. For the red parts, which is basically going to be shoulder pad trim, I'm going to be doing Mephiston Red with Wild Rider Red for some highlights. For the bolter and some other details, I'll be using Mechanicus Santa Gray, Administratum Gray, and a little bit of P3 Moro White. I showed the Abaddon Black here, but I don't actually end up using it. Now, Moro White is my favorite white to work with, but any white will work, such as Citadel Corax White. I'm going to begin by just base coating the entire model with Zamisi Desert. Here, I'm using a large makeup brush to just get it on a nice, even, smooth coat. I really love using makeup brushes for this sort of quick and dirty dry brushing sort of base coat. It's not really dry brushing per se because I'm not drying the paint out in the same way I would with a, you know, if I was trying to do detailed dry brushing, but it's very much the same motion and kind of the same end result. And I find these larger makeup brushes, this is an e.l.f. cosmetics brush, just do a really, really good job of getting a nice, smooth, even coat on a model. They're also only a few bucks a piece and well worth the money. With the Zemisi Desert down, I'm going to go ahead and lighten all that up now by dry brushing on a coat of Uriel Yellow. And you'll see I am doing a more of a traditional dry brush. I'm spending a little bit of time drying the paint out on a piece of paper towel. And I'm using a slightly different brush. This one's a little bit softer. Just get that Uriel Yellow everywhere. And with that down, I'm going to do some specific highlighting using Flash Gets Yellow. You can see I'm building the highlights a little bit shaped. It's kind of got a bit of a cell shaded feel to it. Now I'm not really trying to cell shade this model, but I want the general shape of the highlight to start that way and then I can blend it out after the fact. So you'll see I'm basically focusing my highlights by working from the top of the model down. So there's a big sort of half ovoid on the shoulder pad, working on the crest of the helmet, the top of the backpack, and I'm just gonna continually work my way around the model, adding these highlights to everything that's basically facing up that's yellow. Now here I'm highlighting the collar and what I learned doing this model is I could probably save this till later because the collar is one of those things that ends up needing a lot of touch up work at the end. And so the highlight could have actually been incorporated into the touch-up step. Just knowing that it's going to an area where when I go to start adding all the black ink to the model, it's going to be one of those sort of problem areas that just kind of gets bumped into a little bit. But for now, I'm just treating it like anything else that might need a highlight. So you can already see what a bright contrast you get between Uriel Yellow and Flash Gets Yellow. Even though Uriel is a very vibrant yellow on its own, Flash Gets is just one or two steps above that in that brightness scale and really starts to bring out the contours of the armor. Now you notice on the leg there, even though I say I mostly try to focus on the sort of upward facing surfaces, I really highlight a lot of the leg and that's because it's a very odd shape to just kind of leave alone and ignore because it is a front facing part of the model. It's a very large part of the model's surface area and to just kind of ignore it would feel wrong. So you can see what I did is I tapered the highlight from sort of that side trim panel towards the front. So the front side is the deepest where it's kind of sloping forward. All right, with all that yellow down, it's time to get some red trim painted up. So that's going to just really be the shoulder pad trim and the little crest on the Space Marine's chest, which is a little difficult to get to because the bolter's in the way. This is one of those things where if I wanted to really do an ultimate paint job, I would leave the bolter off and attach it towards the end because it does block so much of the painting. But I also would like to sort of live by the rule that if you can't reach it to paint it, it doesn't matter too much. And that's especially true in comic style painting where we have the ability to just kind of throw big puddles of black ink at things to hide them. You know, areas that you can't easily see should be inked out black in comic style because that's how they would be approached in a comic, a thing that is kind of a shadowed detail behind a more prominent detail uses a deep black shadow to sort of bring that prominent detail to the foreground and the bolter would definitely be a prominent detail. You know, you would want the bolter to really be front and center of any scene it's in and to do that you just set it off against the model by having a nice deep black shadow around it. 
And so we can really take care of that later when we sort of just those areas that are hard to reach in the chest, we just black them out. As I like to say, when in doubt, black it out. Just get rid of it. It's hard to reach, it doesn't matter. You just jam a brushful vink in there and get rid of it. So now I'm using the Mechanicus Standard Gray to add a base coat to the bolter itself. I'm also using the Mechanicus Standard Gray for a few other little details. The little baubles on the side of the helmet, there's that little, you know, I don't even know what to call it, that little circular detail, and the small little pipes either side. And then areas like the accordion joints in the armor, I paint all those with the same color. I'm also using it for his bolt pistol and bolt pistol holster. I could have picked out another color for the holster, such as a brown, but I do like keeping the palette as short as possible when I'm doing comic style because it feels very true to an older era comic when a character may have only had a handful of colors and they're really reused for a lot of things. So here I am sneaking a little bit of that gray inside the back of the knee. This is also an area you could probably just black out if you wanted to, but I like to have a little bit of color hinting at the fact there's a detail there. And you'll see I'm also going to work it into other things such as the belt. And the Primaris Marines have those sort of like retention straps that go across between like their shoulder and back around to their side. I don't know what to call them. Maybe it's a power conduit. I don't really know the purpose. But it's kind of hidden there between the backpack and the shoulder pad. And I use this same gray for that as well. And finally, things like the vents and so on on the backpack. Basically, almost everything that's not red or yellow is getting this gray color. With a couple small exceptions, like the eye lenses and there's a purity seal on his leg, will sort of get their own important colors because they're kind of, you know, details that you don't just want to have blend into the background. So I'm going to use a little bit of Xandri dust for the paper aspect of the purity seal. And the red, of course, I was able to recycle the Mephiston red I already had out. The purity seal is then highlighted with some flayed one flesh. For the little wax seal component, I'm going to use a little bit of Wild Rider Red to just bump up the brightness and make it have a little more visual impact. And then I'm going to bring that same Wild Rider Red and just add some highlights to kind of match the shape of the armor highlights on the red trim. I'm also going to use the Wild Rider Red to pick out the top of the skull and the top of the wings across his chest. Next up, I'm grabbing the Administratum Gray to start adding highlights to the bolter and other gray details. Now with the bolter, what I like to do is spend more time highlighting sort of the outer components. There's, you know, the scope, the magazine, the barrels, and just sort of like the little gubbins towards the back of the gun, and leaving a bit of a flatter color to the larger sort of rectangular casing of the gun itself. And it gives the impression of sort of having two different materials composing the gun, as if it's maybe got like a plastic outer casing or a painted outer casing around a more mechanical piece. And really just having that sort of two layers of detail does make the model feel a little more interesting. This is commonly done on GW Space Marines by painting, you know, using I was going to say bolt gun metal, but it would be lead belcher or iron breaker at this point for the metallic aspects. And then the casing, that sort of, you know, central rectangular body is usually done in black with some gray edging. In this case, we're just doing it all with the same shades of gray, but just with more highlights applied to what we consider the metallic parts. Now, the eye lenses are a tricky detail on Imperial Fist because I couldn't find any definitive listing of what color they should be. I ended up going with blue myself just because it felt nice to add some blue to this model. Green would probably look really striking as well, but blue just felt like a good counter to the yellow. It's a very complimentary color. So blue may technically be wrong, but honestly, you should paint your models however you want to. And eye lenses are a really small detail that you can use to bring in a little personal splash of color, even when you're trying to stick with a sort of approved chapter look. So I'm going to do a little bit of prep work here on the base, and I'm just going to give it a quick coat of Contrast Black Templar. I'll be coming back later to add a lot of detail to the base, and this is just preparatory work that I can do now, so I can basically keep painting the rest of the model while I let this Black Templar dry. 
I'm going to add some extra highlights to the eye lenses. I want to give them a little more punch. And so this is a little bit of Lothurn blue and white mixed together. Okay, believe it or not, that is all of the base coat work, and it's time to get into doing the comic style look, which is adding all of the black ink that really just makes this stand out and produce that comic style appearance. The ink I'm using here is Higgins Black Magic, and it's my favorite ink to work with. It's a very solid, opaque black, and I find it takes really well to miniature work. There are other inks you can use as well. Dale or Rowney FW Black is really good. Liquitex Carbon Black isn't bad. It's a little bit less opaque in that sometimes you might have to do a little bit of touch-up work. Amsterdam makes a very nice black ink as well. And there are plenty of good calligraphy and other drawing inks out there I've never had a chance to try and use. The one thing you want to look for when you're picking out an ink is you want it to be waterproof or color fast. What that means is if you come in later with, say, a little bit of a Seraphim Sepia wash, you don't want the ink to suddenly all become fluid again and just run all over your model. And so whenever you're trying a new ink out, it's best to just do a little bit of a test on a small model or a piece of sprue or something first, just to make sure that when you add either, say, a wash over top of it or add your varnish later, that it doesn't cause the ink to run. So what I'm doing here is blacking out all of these downward facing surfaces, these parts of the leg that look right down towards the ground. And so that's the area just above the foot and above the heel. And this also really helps isolate the shin or the back of the leg from the foot itself. Because they're all the same color, it's just yellow on yellow on yellow. And the black lines, these nice thick black lines that basically cover an entire plane of these details, really helps isolate them. And I'll basically continue doing this sort of large, wide black line anywhere. Two details kind of overlap, but with a bit of an offset. So for example, the shin armor, the front of the leg, is just a little bit wider than the back of the leg. And rather than trying to do a tiny fine line along that sort of raised edge, just making the whole raised edge black really helps it stand out. And it's just a lot simpler. It, it saves some time too. Now, I'm going to be honest here, I kind of wish I had left the backpack off. These little gray straps that I'm working around here, across the back, kind of reaching around to the front of the torso, they're a pain in the butt to reach with the backpack still on and try and get adequate black lines around them. So if you can leave your backpack off, it's probably in your benefit. Now with the knee pad here, what I'm going to do is add a line underneath it, as I have done just on other round details. But I'm also bringing some little fine hash lines out of that line and kind of up to the curve of the knee. And that helps create the idea of a color gradient, you know, going from the bright yellow into that black because the sort of parallel tapering lines create the illusion of darkness. They kind of do the work of a wash, you know, creating that fade from light to dark, but it's done entirely with just differing volumes of black. So here again, I'm going to be using hatch marks to pull sort of a tapered, you know, gradient feel out of a shadow. So I've got that dark line that's the shadow on the inside of the leg, and I'm pulling a series of small black parallel lines towards the front of the leg. And the idea again is that it creates the illusion of colors going from light to dark by just having an increasing amount of black happening from one side of that to the other. Now, unfortunately, with that camera angle, the Space Marine's other leg was in the way, and I couldn't really do much about that, so hopefully you at least caught some glimpses of what I was talking about there, or we'll see it from another angle in the near future here. And one more time, big black lines around sort of offset details.
Now the gun holster here is almost a perfectly flat surface, but it's got a couple small wrinkles in it. What I'm doing is I'm adding some black lines to just really bring the detail of those wrinkles to the forefront. Because it's a big kind of flat plane on the model, and it's a good opportunity to just bring in some extra kind of freehandish detail. Now, because this holster is also basically just a box, it's a really good opportunity to bring in some black outlining. And this is one of those things where we do this where we can, and it's not going to happen a lot on most models. But by doing it here and there, by adding the occasional black outline, you create the mental impression that those lines exist. And when you combine it with sort of the, you know, the harsh black edges we have on these overlapping panels and so on, it leads the viewer to think you've outlined the piece, even in places where you haven't. Basically, we use lines where we can fit them in to help set visual expectation, even though we don't 100% deliver on that expectation. Basically, we're cheating. Now this is where things start to get really tricky because I'm working on the chest emblem which is of course hidden behind a bolter here. But most of this I don't really bother lining. You know I really just focus on the top where it sort of meets the neck and now what I'm doing is working on the back of the neck because there's you know this area of the neck that faces towards the backpack and it's just not really a relevant detail. I'm also filling in that sort of indented detailed area behind the head as well. Just we don't need it for anything. It's not really an important detail. We can just black out most of it. The ability to sort of just hide details you don't want to work with in just a puddle of black ink is one of the really great features of comic style painting. When something is a pain in the butt, hard to reach, or just kind of feels unimportant, you can just black it out and have it be a hidden element at that point. Now with these flange knee pads that the Primaris Marines have, there's a little bit of a sharp edge here. And what I'm using, I'm bringing just a little tapered line along it and only bringing it about a third of the way around the knee. And that way it's got more color across the top. The line doesn't go all the way around, but it still gives the visual impression of there being a sharp edge there. Here I'm lining the fingers and I'm doing that in two different directions because of course the fingers are segmented. So I'm drawing a black line along the break in the segment and then again between each finger so kind of just setting up a grid Lining the bolter itself is pretty straightforward because it's just a box with a bunch of straight lines on it for the most part. There's really not a lot of improvisation or a lot of surprises here. Now here I'm working on the shoulder pads and as I've done with sort of anywhere there's sort of overlapping offset details, I'm painting that nice thick line along the sort of small edge between the shoulder pad and the shoulder pad trim. And that gives us a nice black line in place and also means we don't have to worry about trying to line that tiny super thin edge at all. Now here behind the backpack on the back, I'm adding a lot of black. And the reason for that is it's yellow on yellow. And if we can put a nice big dark shadow in there, it helps the backpack be more visible, be easier to see. And it also is just sort of a tight area of the model where we don't want to have to try and invest a lot of effort in detailing it properly. So anywhere you've kind of got, you know, overlapping details, especially when they're the same color and you've got an area that's just a little bit harder to reach, just kind of filling it in with black is the easiest way to approach it. So now I've come back to the chest emblem and what I'm doing is just filling in 
the line between the sort of two layers of feathers here. I'm not outlining individual feathers. I'm just breaking it down into two segments of the wing. And now we're coming back out and outlining the purity seal. It's a really simple detail. This one's really straightforward. The inside surface of the bolter here is one of those things that I just black right out. I don't worry about detailing it whatsoever. I bring the black almost all the way out to the end of the gun, just leaving a little bit of the outer edge of that visible in gray. Now the backpack is pretty straightforward. It's got a lot of very linear details that need to be followed and just have a black line added to them. So I'm working my way around that right now. It's kind of a tedious process though, because there are a lot of just sort of overlapping and meeting segments and, you know, engraved panel lines. And you pretty much can't ignore them. So it's just, it's one of the more tedious aspects of this model is just hitting all those different angles. The one saving grace is that we do sort of just get to, you know, black out a lot of the inside edge of the backpack. But this outside surface, you know, has a lot of little parallel lines here across the top. And, you know, that big round detail in the middle can be a little bit troublesome. I do find when I'm doing comic style inking that round details, especially circles, things like rivets and so on, are one of the hardest things to do well because it's really a challenge to keep you know, the line weight around a circle consistent. So now I'm onto the helmet, or at least the area around the helmet, and one of the first things I want to do here is fill the area of the torso underneath the helmet. So kind of like the neck and the, you know, casing around the neck. You know, fill that in with a nice deep well of black. And so that way, when viewed from most angles, the helmet stands off against that well and becomes a very distinct detail. It's one of those things that's easier said than done though, because it's really a bit of a challenge to slip the brush underneath the helmet without messing the helmet up. And this is one of those places where, you know, a smaller, more flexible brush is better. And, you know, something without a really wide bristle load, so you don't end up getting ink on the helmet when you don't want to. And now speaking of the helmet, I'm detailing it, of course. This again is just, you know, a matter of following the curves that are there. The tricky part is outlining the eye lenses. You can see here I'm coming in along sort of the top of the lens, sort of that overhanging eyebrow-ish detail, and then adding, you know, a small line underneath the lens, trying to keep that consistent between the left side and the right side so the lenses look like they have the same shape and the same weight is relatively tricky. Now it is one of those sort of offset lines, you know, the the eye lens is set into the helmet. And so with a little bit of practice, you can kind of follow that curve and just black the edge of it pretty easily. Now in general, Space Marine models come with extra helmets. So that's a great way to practice comic style without diving into doing an entire miniature. You know, just stick some extra helmets on some toothpicks or some bits of sprue or whatever, prime them up and just try out the comic style lining and practice it until you're really comfortable with it. Helmets are a good microcosm of all the different kinds of detail you'll see on a miniature. You know, they've got sharp edges, they've got curves, they've got straight lines, they've got inset details, they've got little grills. So they're kind of, you know, representative of almost everything you'll experience on the model. And so they make really good practice pieces because of that. Also, you just normally have a couple to spare. Now you'll see here I've worked in a fair bit of black ink across the back of the helmet and that's because it's you know up against the sort of collar and that's up against the backpack. There's a lot of sort of stacked layers of yellow here and having a nice black line across the back of the helmet 
especially an area that's at mostly going to be kind of like deeply shadowed, really helps set those details apart from each other. And I know I keep basically saying the same thing over and over again, but we're doing the same things for the same reasons over and over again, so that's why it just keeps getting repeated. So you can see when I'm looking at the model from the top down here, there's a couple little areas where I've goofed up a little bit, mostly around the collar, a little bit on the shoulder pad there as well. I will come back in with some yellow later on just to do some touch-ups. Those small mistakes like that, I leave them alone until the very end though, because sometimes they actually end up adding a really important little break in your solid colors, either adding you know some shape or the appearance of some dirt or just helping mitigate the solidness of some color. So often I'll just leave my mistakes to correct until the very end because some of them end up not feeling like mistakes by the time I'm done. So now I'm back to the bolter again and just as before I'm just following a bunch of straight lines on it. There's no surprises. There's really no freehanding or interpretation I have to do on the bolter. It's just straight lines along straight lines. The reason I kind of work on a detail, then leave it and come back to it, is to make sure I'm never hyper-focusing on a detail. If I sort of do a little bit of the work, and then go move on to something else, and then come back again, it helps me keep the amount of detail around the whole model kind of consistent. I find I don't end up, you know, overworking one spot and neglecting something else. If I just constantly kind of shift around my focus, you know, put a little detail into the leg, move up to the hand, move up to the shoulder, and kind of just move my way around the model like that. It averages out my attention, and it makes for a better model in the end. Because otherwise what will happen is I might fixate on some detail and get really, really fine line work in one spot, and then choose some other part of the model that maybe is less interesting, and really kind of phone in the detail a little bit. And what ends up happening is the model starts to feel inconsistent. So by kind of jumping around, I allow myself to sort of take little mental breaks and reassess how things look and kind of look at everything as a more cohesive whole. So at this point, all of the really obvious lining is done. You know, every single edge has been picked out and I've put in all the real big shadows I want. What I'm working on now are these sort of smaller, more like freehand style shadows. And these are really sort of a detail that's open to interpretation. This is something that you can distill from different comic book artists, the way they approach kind of creating shadows from black ink. And of course, black ink is not universally used by all comic book artists, but the further back you go in comic history, the more and more prominent, you know, black inking as the major source of kind of the feel of a piece is. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating sort of a volume shadow on these round surfaces. So the back of the shoulder pads, this round L in the middle of the backpack. And I'm leaving a little bit of the yellow showing around it. So it doesn't just form a shadow that just goes right down to the bottom. It leaves a little bit of a crease of a brighter color to inform you of what that color is. And allow the shape of that object to be a much more you know, obvious and more apparent. And I can continue working around the model, basically adding these sort of little shaping shadows to almost everything if I really want to. Uh, I won't do it everywhere, but it's the kind of thing that really just helps build the character and build the hand-drawn feel of this being a comic-style miniature, as opposed to just a miniature with a bunch of black lines on it. Now, for a lot of comic book artists, these sort of black areas also help create the impression that an area is glossy, whether it's metallic or just a high shine surface. Having these, you know, kind of black reflections on a surface, as opposed to just being a solid block of color, tells you that it's shiny. There's something there that's causing a shadow to be refracted from the surface. And so this helps us, you know, make the armor look less matte even though our result is actually quite matte when we're done this. So 
So now I'm adding a different kind of surface detail. These are just going to be small little like blemishes and linear details that give the impression of scuffs, scratches, dents, dings, little bits of dirt. Just the kind of wear and tear that armor should accumulate over time. Now most of these sort of take the form of what I guess I would call coffee stains. They're sort of, you know, irregular, roundish shapes, usually kind of towards the edge of a piece of armor or the edge of a piece of detail. And they just give the impression that, you know, there's some discoloring there, you know, something's, something's gone wrong. They're dirty, they're dented, whatever. And you can see that in this case, I'm not quite closing the circle. It's a little bit more of like a letter C and then just a little bit of hatch lining inside of it to just make it look a little bit darker dented, maybe a little bit inset. Now I'm busting out a little bit of the red and yellow from the armor and just going over some areas where I feel like the black caused some mistakes or through handling the model I've maybe smudged it a little bit, things like that. I'm using paint to refine some of the black shapes where maybe the brush went a little bit wide, where maybe my line widths aren't quite the same as I want them. Just things like that. You'll see I'm going to touch up those little spots on the collar now. And just work my way around the model, just refining it visually, just fixing little things that I just wasn't really happy with that were a result of the black inking process because the black ink is very opaque and is very unforgiving. So you just have to let your mistakes live and go back and fix them if they still feel out of place by the time you get to this step. Now with all that said and done, I felt the model was still a little bit flatter than I'd like, so I'm going to bring out a little bit of Citadel Flash Gets Yellow and just add an extra layer of highlights on top of just parts of the yellow. Flash Gets Yellow is a little bit on the translucent side, so I'm not too worried about it potentially covering up some black because the black is much more opaque than the yellow is. The yellow does not cover black well. But I'm just using a little bit of it here and there as basically an edge highlight on the yellow aspects of this model. You know, working a little bit into the shoulder pads, around the collar, the back of the hand, parts of the backpack, and so on. And I'm being very sparing with it. It's a very small, controlled highlight, especially because I don't want to have to, you know, recreate a lot of detail that's been done in black already. I don't want to make more work for myself. So I'm really focusing this on just a few key points. Now next I'm going to apply an Imperial Fist logo water slide decal or transfer decal onto the left shoulder. The process I use for doing that is really a video in and of itself, so I'm just going to skip ahead now to the point where it's done. So now I'm back to the black ink and I'm working my way around the model one more time just looking for areas where I feel like I can really build on some shadows by you know adding a series of parallel tapered lines or hash marks. 
And the inside of the leg here is an obvious win. I want to, you know, make that shadow deeper, give it more of a, you know, a black inner area when viewed in profile to help the other leg stand out more against that field of black. And it's just a really good flat surface that allows it to take a lot of detail. So it's a good place to work in some hash marks without worrying about the difficulty of kind of getting them around a curved surface and so on. One thing I find that's really kind of interesting about using water slide decals is if you bring a little bit of your painted colors up onto the decal, it helps it feel more like an authentic part of the miniature and not just something that you, you know, copied and pasted onto the model, basically. So what I did right there is my little black shadow that was running up near the emblem, I just carried it out a little bit so it overlapped onto the shoulder pad onto the logo and that helps the logo incorporate itself back into the rest of the shoulder pad now at this point about the only thing left to complete is the base itself and i'm not going to show that whole process because it's just a matter of laying down a bunch of blacks and actually covering it with a basilicum gray contrast paint to give me the feeling of lining without all the effort the one specific bit of line work I'm going to do is painting a deep black shadow around each foot. And what that does is it helps create a visual separation between the miniature and the base. And so it becomes very clear the miniature is standing on the base as opposed to being incorporated into it. I lied, I'm actually going to come back and talk about the base a little bit more. What I'm doing here is adding a very large volume shadow underneath the miniature on the base. And it's basically taking the form of sort of an hourglass stretch between the two feet. Now, one little detail I just completely omitted up until this point is painting the eye lenses of the helmet. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of low third blue. And this is a little bit nerve wracking now because, of course, I finished all the black ink all around this. And ideally, I don't want to mess anything up. So I'm being very, very careful, very precise applying this lighter blue to the eyes. Now I've taken a little bit of white, mix that with the low therm blue to get just a very, very light blue. And I'm just adding a small highlight to each of the lenses. Same process, just, you know, working it in, doing my best to avoid messing up any of the surrounding detail. All right, and with that, the comic style Imperial Fist Space Marine is done. This is honestly one of my favorite comic style pieces to date. The counterplay between the black and the yellow just really brings everything to life, makes every single detail stand out, and makes this such an easy model to read and identify on a table. And even at very close distances, it's got a lot of really striking, interesting things happening. I really hope you'll take this video and try this yourself, and when you do, please tag me because I'd love to see what you've done with it. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, puts a roof over my family's head and food on the table. You can also join me for live painting shows several times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd love if you came by and watched the show sometime and followed the channel. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who supported my content over the years, both past and present. It's been an absolutely wild ride, and I couldn't do this without all the wonderful fans and flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you really make this worth doing. So let's just keep on doing this together, making more content, and just being fantastic together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.